Hello everyone, welcome to my video on Stacko Bird Competition and Market Entry. Uh, this is a part one video where we will deal with the normal Stacko Bird framework where there's an incumbent firm who leads in choosing quantity and then an entering firm who responds. We're just going to do the duopoly case with one of each. Uh, in my part two video, we'll get into questions of whether the firm, the incumbent firm might want to block entry altogether. So here's the way this game works. We have an incumbent firm who faces this inverse demand curve, price equals 200 minus one half Q. I just gave them a constant marginal cost of 30 and no fixed costs. And currently this firm is operating as a monopolist. But a second firm is going to enter the market. And just for fun, I gave the second firm a higher cost function. Uh, still constant marginal cost, but 40 instead of 30. And this is sometimes relevant if there's like a learning by doing and the incumbent firm has a cost advantage over the entrant. Don't worry about it too much for this example. I'm just doing math here. So firm one is the one who's already there, the incumbent. Firm two is the entrant who wants to join the market. In this game, there are two stages, kind of three if you count prices, but stage one is that the incumbent chooses Q1. And then in stage two, the entrant responds by choosing Q2. And then in stage three, if you wanted to call it that, then substitute their Qs into the price function. We're focused on the Qs. All right, so how do we do this? Uh, anytime we have a multi-stage game, we and rational players with full information, we're gonna do it by backwards induction. So we're gonna solve stage two first and then see what firm one is gonna do in advance. So. This first stage is going to look a lot like Corneau competition. We're going to, for stage two, we're going to, to choose Q2, we're going to set the marginal revenue for firm two equal to the marginal cost for firm two and solve for the quantity that makes that true. Now, marginal revenue is going to be 200 minus one half Q1 minus two times one half Q2. Uh, notice it's the same thing as our inverse demand curve, except I doubled the slope uh, with respect to Q2. This falls out of the calculus of profit maximizing. My class doesn't have any, doesn't actually have much in the way of calculus, so I usually do straight lines. This slope doubling trick is true anytime your demand curve is a straight line. Set that equal to marginal cost. And let's see, what do we get? We get 160 minus 1 half Q1 equals Q2. And this is firm two's best response function. Whatever Q1, whatever quantity firm one produces, firm two's response is going to be that. This is the best that they can possibly do. Now, firm one, we have a game with complete information and no uncertainty and all that stuff. Uh, firm one now gets to choose Q1. And it's gonna do so knowing that this is what firm two wants to do. So firm one, before it even does any calculus, before it chooses its quantity, we're gonna let them modify their demand curve, substituting in this value. Uh, let me show you what I mean real quick. Before we do anything, let's do our demand curve. Those 200 minus one half Q1 minus one half Q2. All right, so there's the demand curve. But we can substitute in the best response function Minus one half um, 
160 minus 1 half Q1. So firm one, knowing that whatever it chooses, firm two will respond with 160 minus 1 half Q1, can substitute that into its demand function. And let's simplify it one last time. That's going to be... I'm going to skip a couple of little algebra steps. We're going to get 120 minus 1 fourth Q1. And this is what's called a residual demand function. This is the demand function that's left after we solve out Q2, uh, basically. So now that we have a residual demand function, now firm one's gonna do its calculus. It's gonna set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Let's see, marginal revenue is 120 minus two times a fourth Q1. So again, just doubling the slope with respect to the Q I'm choosing equals 30. So let's see, that's 90 equals 1 half Q1. That's going to be Q, I guess I can write it in. 90 equals 1 half Q1. Q1 equals 180. And that is Q1 Stackelberg. That's what firm one will do, assuming they allow entry. Now, from that, we can get Q2, Stackelberg, is equal to 160 minus 1 half of 180, which means that Q2, Stackelberg, is equal to, uh, sorry, is equal to 70. Cool. Now that we have that, and that's the hard part of Stackelberg is getting your quantities. The rest is the same as any old market. Let's see, the market Q is equal to 180 plus 70 is equal to 250. The market P is equal to 200 minus 1 half times Q, which is going to be 75. And then we could solve for firm profits. I'll do it in red. We'll stay consistent here. Pi 1 is under Stackelberg is equal to the quantity, 180, times the price, 75, minus the average total cost, which for them is 30. And that all equals 8,100. For firm 2, Profit is equal to the quantity times the price minus the average total cost, which comes out to $24.50. All right, so there's Stackelberg in a nutshell. We solve for quantities, prices, and profits. Uh, so assuming Firm 1's going to let Firm 2 enter the market, this is the best that they can both do. Uh, at the time of entry. In my next video, we'll get into issues of are, might there be ways of firm one preventing firm two from entering? And it's gonna really depend on if there's entry costs in addition to this cost function of production. Uh, if there's no entry costs, then no, Stackelberg is where it's at. Uh, if there are, well, it'll just depend on how big they are. So we'll talk about that next. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, if not, sorry to waste your time. Thanks for watching, and good luck, guys.